Hey guys, my name is Darren Lynn Bowsman and I am the director of The Devil's Carnival. Uh, first off, thank you so much for watching this presentation which will fill you in on this crazy, out of the box, weird cult thing called The Devil's Carnival. Uh, quickly, a background on who I am. I started off uh, lucky enough to be involved with the Saw universe. I directed and wrote Saw 2 and then directed Saw 3 and 4 uh, before meeting Terrence, who you'll meet in a second, and collaborated on the cult musical Repo the Genetic Opera. Went on, did a couple other films after that, Mother's Day and The Barons, before re-teaming with Terrence in 2012 to do our second musical, The Devil's Carnival. Hi, I'm Terrence Dunich. I'm the writer of The Devil's Carnival and I play Lucifer. Uh, my background began in the visual arts as a storyboard artist, an animator, comic book guy, before going on to make weird, crazy, gothic rock musical films. The most Repo fans will know me, however, as Grave Robber. Darren and I are now working on The Devil's Carnival. It's our new thing, it's a cult musical fantasy horror series set in heaven and hell, Aesop fables put to music. That's just a little bit of what the Devil's Carnival has to offer. There's a chaos that reigns at the heart of this beast. Yes, our carnival is a loyal machine. All 666 rules are policed. All 666 rules you must heed. We indeed are the anti-glee. What makes the Devil's Carnival unique, and uh, I think our minds, is we're not just a movie. We are not just a film. We are an experience. Terrence and I both are under the mindset that the future of filmmaking is about giving the audience an experience, something they can't get in the living room at home. And that's why The Devil's Carnival was born. Before we get into that though, and talk about the future, we need to understand the past and where we came from. So let's take a look back. When I was growing up, there were three movies that made me want to be a director. Tommy, Jesus Christ Superstar, and more importantly, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It was a movie that was released in 1975 that would change my aspirations, my passion for wanting to be an artist, Rocky Horror Picture Show. I remember the first time I saw it, I was in middle school. It was the first time ever sitting in a theater that I felt like I belonged to a community. Why? Because it wasn't just a movie, it was an experience. It was something that I was a part of. I was transported from my everyday average mundane life into this mystical place where it was okay to be weird, to dress up, to act a fool, to sing out loud, to throw things at the screen. And it was at that moment that I knew I had to make a rock opera. I wanted to make my own Rocky Horror Picture Show. Unlike Darren, I've always hated musicals. I found them sappy and lame uh, until I saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I realized that that art form could be made cool. It could be edgy. It didn't need to be singing in the rain. That's what inspired Reaper the Genetic Opera, which began as what we call a 10 minute opera in coffee houses and nightclubs throughout Los Angeles. We assembled basically a small crew of actors and musicians and we played. The project grew over the years until it eventually became a full length play, literally an opera. Uh, which we mounted in a small black box theater in Los Angeles in 2002. We needed a director, and that's where I met Darren. So right after film school, I decided to move to Los Angeles. Ironically, the very first thing I would be hired to direct would be Terrence's little libretto called Repo the Genetic Opera. I, uh, I was lucky enough to be able to direct the black box stage production of it, and it was amazing. It was probably the most exhilarating experience of my life. Here I came to Los Angeles to direct musicals, and two years after arriving, I was directing my own Rocky Horror Picture Show. It was an awesome experience. The show ended, I uh, thanked Terrence and Darren for allowing me this opportunity, and I ended it by saying, if I ever make it as a director, I want to turn this into a movie. Well, let's cut to some years later. Saw 2 had come out and was a success. Saw 3 was about to be released. I went to Lionsgate, and I said, I want to make my own musical. I want to make this. Uh, I called Terrence and Darren Smith up, a couple months later, we were in Toronto making Rebo the Genetic Opera. And it was, again, an equally amazing, exhilarating experience. We had Sarah Brightman, the world-renowned opera singer, Paul Servino, Anthony Stewart Head from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It was amazing. The movie was finished and I couldn't have been happier with the final product. However, it was a, a commercial failure. It was only released in two screens. All of this work, the 10 years from the beginning inceptions to where we are right now, no one was going to see this thing. It killed me as a filmmaker. I had such success with Saw, and then to have this horrible failure in Repo, 
I couldn't handle it. But more importantly, I couldn't handle that it wasn't gonna get the chance. It wasn't gonna be put in front of audiences. So Terrence and I got together and I said, screw it, let's get in a van. Let you and I drop across the country, let's four wall theaters and let's allow people to see this thing. I knew that if I loved it this much, there was gonna be other people out there that loved it this much as well. I went into Lionsgate and I asked them, give me back the movie, let me have it for two months, let me do this. And Lionsgate wished us well, gave us the print, and then Terrence and I got in a van and we started driving across the country. Everything changed overnight. Fans showed up in droves, dressed as the characters from the film, singing the songs in the aisle, shadow casting it. It was like Rocky Horror all over again. And the success of our little film literally changed overnight. We'd go online and we'd see scores of repo-inspired fan art, versions of the songs, photos of people doing live shadow casts. And every night on the road tour, more surprisingly, we'd have people show up and they'd pull up their sleeves and they'd have repo lyrics tattooed up their arms. They'd have characters on their bodies. And five years later, Repo is still playing in theaters. A little movie with no studio support, no PA, no radio spots or bus stop ads, suddenly had more impact than any of the other previous movies I'd done. It was an amazing thing to watch. Terrence and I right then said, we had to do it again. We have to find another way to do our own Repo. But this time, let's not make it for a studio. Let's make it for the fans. And for years, Terrence and I racked our brains. What could we make? that was as cool as Repo, something that wasn't selling out, something that had the heart and soul of the first thing we did. A few years later, Terrence came to me with an idea, The Devil's Carnival. Uh, three acts scheduled for tonight's performance. Thoughts the ink was dried, but hellish gardens flowered, ivy to be climbed, spread my filth, my wings, my weeds, my I weeds. I my son. I know your people are gonna help me find him. Answers wait inside, sir. Devil's Carnival was not a movie I wanted to make. It was a movie that I had to make for a multitude of reasons. The last few years of my life, I was becoming disillusioned with the Hollywood machine. Movie after movie was getting dumped straight to video. And I knew that this didn't have to happen. That for every movie there was an audience, we knew how to find them. And Terrence and I knew how to find our audience. We proved it with Repo and I was determined to prove it again with the Devil's Carnival. So we started filming. But we made the Devil's Carnival for a unique purpose. We not only wanted to make a movie, we wanted to make an event, an experience. This could not have been just something you sat in and watched. We would have failed at that. We wanted to reinforce the community. Because that's what Repo was, it was a community. It wasn't just a movie. And so the Devil's Carnival was made with the community in mind. How do we do something that will transcend just going to see a movie, just sitting in the theater? And the Devil's Carnival Roadshow was born. Tonight, we embark on a 40 city journey, uh, taking this everywhere and bringing this crazy carnival to, to different towns. So first off, thank you for being a part of it. Following the footsteps of Repo, we literally hopped in a van and toured across the country. In the course of three months, we hit 60 cities, basically four walling theaters and creating a rock concert-like event. Sure, you had the screening, but we also had live opening acts, sideshow performers, sword swallowers, burlesque dancers. Basically, we made the event feel like a carnival. And just like with Repo, the fans showed up and went crazy for it. You guys want to see another one? They dressed up like the characters. They sang the songs in the aisle. They participated. It's a lifestyle. It's not just a movie. And once again, there was Devil's Carnival fan art, Devil's Carnival shadow casts, and yes, Devil's Carnival tattoos. When it came time to cast the Devil's Carnival, we took what we learned from Repo the Genetic Opera. Terrence and I made a list of our favorite actors, favorite musicians, people that we wanted to work with. Not who the studio was mandating we put in the movie, but people that would be right for the part. An example, I'm a huge fan of the TV show Deadwood and Sons of Anarchy. Dayton Callie is someone that I've always wanted to work with. I reached out to Dayton. I said, Dayton, you don't know me. Here's this weird, unique project. I did the same thing with Sean Patrick Flannery, a singer that I'm really uh, big fans of, Emily Autumn. We reached out to these people and appealed to them with passion, creativity, and artistic integrity of what we'd be doing. And they all loved it. They were as excited about the project as we were. But not only did we get amazing actors, some of the musicians involved with the project are exciting as hell. Some of the biggest bands in the world, like Slipknot, Five Finger Death Punch, Skinny Puppy, Emily Autumn, they all got behind our brand in the same way the fans did. Everybody, stand up. Please raise your left hand. The devil's hand. And repeat after me. I. 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 us not to be a douchebag. us not to be a douchebag. And film or record. And film or record. The sexy, devilish awesomeness I'm about to see. The sexy, devilish awesomeness I'm about to see.
I think what excites me most as a filmmaker about The Devil's Carnival is it's so much more than just a film. It's the future of filmmaking. Help us in creating this legacy. So in 35 years from now, they're talking about The Devil's Carnival the same way that we are here now talking about the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Thanks a lot for listening.